Sand Photography Show where we talk about travel and nature photography. Well, you know, the holidays are quickly approaching, so if you're looking, if you're in need of a gift for yourself or for someone else who's into photography, the four weeks to proficiency in photography live and interactive online class is a really good gift. We can make out a beautiful gift certificate and get it to you very quickly. Our next live class starts on January 17th. The four weeks class is going to give you a really strong foundation in photography and everything's live with lots of support, homework to help this information really you know, sink in. And of course, as if with everything in Understand Photography, we simplify the technical. This class is good for beginners to intermediate, intermediate photographers because sometimes, you know, you've missed things. So this is a really good start. And the best way to practice and learn even more is to join us on one of our workshop trips. We have three short trips coming up, you know, till the end of the season. The first one is uh, we're going to the Everglades in January. We only have one spot left. Then we have a ladies' retreat, a ladies' photo retreat in Mount Dora, Florida, which is a really cute little town with the Victorian homes, and we rent a boat. We do all kinds of fun things. And then St. Augustine in May. And you can find all the information for the class and for our workshop trips on our website at understandphotography.com. So today is episode number 14. It's so exciting. We've made it 14 weeks. And our guest is Greg Ag. I've known Greg for a long time. I met him at the Professional Photographers Guild, I don't know, maybe seven years ago? I'm not sure. He's an award-winning photographer, and he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's actually, he actually is a guru in Photoshop. He won, in 2013, he was awarded the International Photoshop World Guru Award. So he literally is a guru in Photoshop. He's amazing. He's actually taught some classes here at Understand Photography um, and has his own company called Pixology Arts. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk a little bit about it. He um, started his own real estate photography company called Home Photo Pro in Fort Myers, Florida, which he services the whole general S Southwest Florida area, including Naples. And it was quite a transition, so we're going to talk a little bit about the transition and also about architectural photography because there's a lot to it that, of course, I don't even know. So, welcome, Greg. Thank you, Peggy. Thank appreciate you, you having here. me. I appreciate you having me. It's nice to see you again. I know. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, I know. We get so busy. I get down in Naples a lot, just not down in this general area. So. And I'm not selling my house. No, I know. <laughs> I don't need pictures. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, talk, tell me about, because you started in photography later in life, right? Not that you're old. Well, <laughs> I am kind of old, and um, I did get started photography actually late. It's only really, I've only been doing photography seriously for about two and a half years, which is as long as this business uh, has been in existence. Okay, so, um, so you were doing more of the... I was doing more of the photo retouching, a lot of the post-processing for uh, ad agencies, that type of thing. I took um, my first photography course in college at Maine College of Art. Okay. It, was a, it was the old traditional black and white photography where I, I shot with the uh, Canon EOS 650 film camera. It was all black and white film. You took the pictures, you went into a closet, you unloaded the film in the dark, completely blindfolded into a canister. You developed the film. You went into an enlarger. And I really liked the class a lot. Oh. I liked it a lot. But the photography department was in a really nice building with the graphic designers. and. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a sculptor. I wanted to do the dirty, right. where you can wear the work boots and the dirty jeans and the plaid shirts. And so I kind of pushed that aside and got a degree in uh, sculpture, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Sculpture. Oh my God, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a real, real productive degree to have. <laughs> You know. um, and so I graduated with that and, and it held on to that camera for a long time until it finally broke. Um, and then I got into the Photoshop work and the retouching and love, love Photoshop, still love Photoshop quite a bit. Um, Thank you. I mean, oh my gosh, you have to go on his website. What, what's which? That's a different pic, website. Pixelogyarts.com. Yeah, P-I-X-E-L-O-G-Y Arts.com. And, and by the way, we'll have. Greg's website <coughs> in the show notes on understandphotography.com. But yeah, check out. Don't go now, though. Stay with us. 
So I was doing, I was doing the Photoshop work and I was doing work for ad agencies. I was you know, re either doing composite work or I was creating images. They say, hey, you know, we have a car and we have a person and we want you to make it look like it's all in the same place. And I really like that. But the work for that is few and far between. You're competing with ad agency jobs with hundreds, if not thousands of other artists. And you know, as the years go on, I was realizing the quality and the level of skill out there in the field, I mean, it's just incomparable. I mean, these people are so good and they're like 16 years old, 20 years oh old, 30 gosh. years old. And so we're all, they're all getting better and we're all competing for the same couple jobs. Um, and I just realized that the money was not consistent enough. Mm. Um, you know, I had some good jobs doing for Toyota and Jägermeister and things like that, but they were just too few and far between. So my wife and I talked about what we could, what I could start doing. I always liked photography. Um, my personality is not such that I can do portraits and maternity and weddings. It's just not me. I, I tell all my clients right now, so I only shoot things that don't live and breathe. <laughs> If it talks and moves, forget it. I'm out. You know, um, and so that, I, that surprises me because really, it's, it's such a nice. But I I do know you a little bit. And you're very anal. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. No. It's it's cool. I am. <laughs> um, and so we got to talking, and and I guess we had looked at some books, some real estate books, and was looking at the photography, and a light bulb went off. I was like, wait a second. People are actually taking pictures of buildings and architecture and real estate and it never dawned on me that that was the actual career. Okay. And so I called a couple of real estate friends um, to find out if they used real estate photographers and they said yeah. So I just came up with a plan to start learning oh real estate God. photography, get a website together, build up my portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where it all got started. Wow. So mm. let me, let's talk a little bit about the business of, mm. because you have only been doing it, you said two and a two half years? Two and a half years, years yeah. Wow. Was, uh, I think it was um, June of 2014 is when I got started. But you know a lot about photography because I met Yeah, no, I mean, I, was, I wasn't a dummy, but yeah. you know, I certainly but wasn't. But you didn't know the specific of, the, of real estate. No, no, not at all. I mean, there was a lot of learning involved. And so let me let me just talk about the business mm -hmm. part a little bit. So when you how did you put your portfolio together? Did you did you just know people with fancy houses? Did you go to interior designers? Did you do free stuff for real estate agents? Yeah, you know that that's a big question. Um, I got online and started just learning about real estate photography. There's a lot of um, there's a, there's a group out there, and I forget the real estate photographers. I forget the name of it. But it's a place where real estate photographers go and have conversations and chats and all like that type of thing. Like a forum kind yeah, of Yeah, like a forum. Um, there was a guy who put out a book. His name was Scott Hargis. Uh -huh. um, he's an architectural photographer, and he put out a book. And you can download uh, an electronic version of his book, which I did. I watched some YouTube videos just to kind of get a sense of the equipment that you needed, right. the process, because I didn't know anything about it. It was absolutely, I mean, I knew less about that than I did wedding photography. Ah, you know? that's so, funny. Um, and then once I started kind of getting an idea and I was able to kind of either use the equipment that I had or get a couple pieces that I was going to need, um, I went to model homes and gated communities. Okay. You know, you go in and you say, hey, I'd like to go to um, you know, the sales center. And they let you right in because you're going to the sales center. Oh, yeah. And then you just <laughs> go over and talk to them and say, I'd like to get some shots of... Um, some model homes, and but you have to be to a point um, where you can take advantage of those model homes. Like I think for three months, I practiced in my house. You yeah, know, because you because, can practice anywhere. You know, like oh, I screwed up. Oh, I screwed up. Or oh, that looks like crap. And you know, I did that for three months. And you know, I'm like, why can't I get this? This is not looking right. The verticals are all wrong. And you know, why can't I get this lighting? And um, and so, but once I got to the point where I felt like I could then take advantage of a model home, which you know, decorated really nicely, and um, and you just go in and just ask the salesperson, yeah, and they all yeah, well do they, they all say yes or not all of them, but yeah. you know, you keep, there's a, there's enough of them out there that you know eventually you just need you know three three or four maybe at the most to get a good quality portfolio going, and and that's what I used for the first year that portfolio, and as I got better homes and got better at my craft, and then I kind of switched out the portfolio to right. nicer pictures and better homes and that type of thing. So. All right, so when you were starting out, 
you had some basic equipment. So mm -hmm. what kind of equipment does somebody need um, to do real estate or architectural <coughs> photography? Yeah, and I brought a list in case I kind of forget. Um, I have two cameras, two camera bodies. Mm -hmm. I've got a 5D and a 6D. Can I'm a Canon shooter. Um, not because I hate Nikon, but it's because I know Canon. Yeah. Um, and once I, you buy the lenses, you can't switch. Yeah. It's too expensive. You know, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm kind of stuck in my ways already, so I don't see any reason to kind of yeah. change over. Um, but the reason I have those two cameras is because they both have full frame sensors. Okay. So that's um, important for real yeah, estate. Yeah, because when you're, when you're shooting real estate photography, you have to use a wide angle lens, uh -huh. not a fisheye but a wide angle lens. And I have a 17 to 40 millimeter lens. Okay. And I would say 99% of the time I shoot down at the 17 millimeter range. Um, with a full frame camera. With a full frame camera. Yeah, if because what happens was when I go in and I shoot, I want to be capture exactly what I'm seeing. I don't want the camera cropping things for me. You know, if I'm thinking I'm getting a picture frame or a window, a corner of a window, and I come back and it's not there, it's kind of yeah, you're like, stinks. Yeah, and you know, when you get a wide angle lens, I found 17 millimeters is just wide enough that distortion's not too bad. Okay. Um, but it captures a lot. I mean, I think you know the angle of view is like that. Wow. So when you're standing in a corner, you're getting three walls and you're getting the ceiling or you're getting ceiling fan, candelabras, whatever. So I mean, it works. Now, really do you really just well. have the one lens, or do you? Uh, you? Yeah, I just have one lens. I have your standard. You know, 35 to was it 120 or something like oh, that. The other in lenses. case I, in case I had to shoot from across the pond or something or like oh. get back to the house. Right. Um, but yeah, usually I'd say it's 99% of the time I use that one. So when you started off, you had your full frame camera. Yeah, I, I just had one camera at that point. Um, which is a little I've, scary. Which is a little scary. I've decided that I need to have like two of everything at this point. Yeah, because there's nothing worse you about can't being go on back. Job. Yeah. You know, because everybody, homeowners cleaned up the house. You know, they're ready for you on that day. They may work and they don't have time to come back. The realtor is expecting to get a job done. The last thing I want to do is like, mm, my camera doesn't work. I got to uh. go home, you know. And so I try to have two of everything. And, um, and so then I started off with a ball head, um, an open ball head, I think is what it was. For your For the camera, to have tripod. the camera. Because one of the very important things about shooting real estate or any type of architectural photography, the verticals have to be vertical. And if you're shooting straight on, things have to be horizontal. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that's the hard to do. Yeah, if a tripod leg is off a little bit, you know, the camera is going to be crooked. The walls are going to be crooked. Um, and so, you need that ball head. Well, I thought you need a ball head to kind of straighten things up. Okay. Um, but after about eight or nine months, I realized that that ball head is so um, unprecise. Oh. Because um, you have when you're adjusting, you're adjusting the whole thing, and so it's kind of rocking. Okay. And then you kind of have to look into the viewfinder and look at the grid pattern, compare it to a corner of a wall or a picture frame, and try to center it up, and then tighten it down. Um, and so after nine months of that, I'm like, there's got to be a better way. So what's the better way? The better way is a Manfrotto um, gearhead. Gearhead. Um, yeah, the thing must weigh like 10, 15 pounds or something. Oh my gosh. Um, but what it does is it sits on top of the tripod and it's got three axes. It's got a knob that you can kind of rotate around the horizontal. Okay. And then it's got a fine tune adjustment. So you got a, a gross adjustment and then a fine tune adjustment. And then you can rotate the pitch and then you can rotate uh, the bank. And so there's three knobs on there. And so then you can fine tune, the, you look in the viewfinder and fine tune the verticals. Um, and that has been a lifesaver oh in terms of making life a lot easier. And tell uh, me the name again so we can It's a Manfrotto it. gearhead. I'm not real technical, so I don't remember all the little serial numbers and, okay. you know, the But maybe we'll get that from you so yeah, we can absolutely. put it in the show notes because that sounds like really it's good advice. It's expensive, but it's a one-time purchase and you're going to, your life will be so a much lot better. easier. better, yeah. yeah, because that's hard to it get It is the, hard, yeah. So yeah. if you had a choice, between vertical straight and horizontal straight. Vertical. Vertical. Vertical, good. yeah. That's a because question. It, we teach that in our, in our oh, class, right? but <laughs> it's like, oh, I like to have other people say yeah. it too. Because verticals are always yeah. vertical, because I mean, if you're standing at an angle, the walls are always, the ceiling lines are always going to be at an angle, so you can't really tell. Verticals, you can tell. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, because I am a wedding photographer. Mm. One thing that drives me crazy is when they have a huppa mm. on the beach. 
and they have the top it's of it crooked. like this and the, hor and the horizon and it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, I can't. So again, it's like, okay, I'll deal with the verticals yeah, and the, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> do what you can, yeah. So, all right, so getting everything straight. Now, what about a tilt shift lens? Um, I have never used one. I've looked into them and I've seen um, videos of people using them. I haven't experienced it firsthand to know the benefits of them. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they're good for architectural photography. Um, I know that they're expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> I don't have one yet. I wouldn't poo-poo it, yeah. but I've just never used you one. So I, I, don't, yeah, I don't know but yet. You're you're doing a good job, obviously, because mm. you've done really well since you yeah. started doing this. Obviously, people are happy. Yeah, so you I must be doing so. something right. You must be doing something. And right. of course, I looked at your website and your work. Oh, okay. It's amazing, which I knew it would be. Because so, yeah. yeah, and so the other equipment would be I have a um, carbon fiber tripod. It's got um, you know, extension. I think it's three si three section extensions. Um, Those are the legs. The legs. And then this yeah. gear head is the head. And the gear head's on top. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I've got the flashes that I use, um, or ch I try to pronounce them Yongnyo. Oh Yung yeah. Uh -huh. um, YN five sixty threes or something like that. They're seventy dollars a piece. That's are they manual flashes? Seventy bucks. No, they do it. Yeah, TTL? they're manual, but they do everything. They do TTL. They do well. everything. Yeah. And I had a Canon flash. I paid five hundred eighty dollars. I was going to say they're like six hundred dollars almost. Had, I haven't use that it's sitting in a closet somewhere Are you I've got six me? of these young yo young yos um, and I use them until they burn out and then I toss it and grab another one I mean they're so cheap they do everything the buttons on them are bigger than the cannons it's easier to understand um, and everything is manual anyways so do they go off every time mm -hmm. I mean they're reliable too yeah, absolutely. they just don't last that long no they seem to last quite a bit I mean I'm, wow. I'm flashing them a lot Wow. So, yeah I highly recommend them you know I want to I don't promote a Chinese company, but you know it's. I know they're, they're good Sierra, flashes, so. Sierra just bought one. Uh, oh, did she? she? got the for you know she's got a Nikon yeah, camera, yeah. but she bought it. Yeah, it worked great. I think. And I have a wireless trigger, so I can. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put the flash on the monopod, and it's a collapsible monopod. It's really light, and and I'll put the flash on top, and I can flash the ceilings, I can flash windows, I can, and then I got a remote trigger, so I don't have to be by the camera when I'm using the flash. Okay. So you're remotely triggering your mm -hmm. camera, mm -hmm. and you're holding your flash. Now, are you using a, a long shutter? The, the shutter's open, and you're flashing different places. Tell me about the lighting. Okay, yeah, it's uh, that took a lot of a lot of watching and learning and practice to kind of figure out my style. Okay. Um, I started off. I don't. Let's get. I don't do HDR. You don't do HDR I don't at all. Do, I do not like Woo! HDR. Um, to me, HDR is so overdone, or it can be overdone. It um, looks cartoony. I don't care for it. I never have. And I tried Photomatics and Aurora and some other programs. And I, some people can make it work. I could never find the right settings to kind of make it look natural. Yeah. Um, and in real estate photography, you want people to see the house for what it is, not yeah. for what it's not. And HDR kind of makes it really grainy and. Yeah. I just don't care for it. So I came across another program and my long searching on YouTube and um, it's a plug-in for Lightroom. Okay. And it's called Lightroom Infuse. 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 E-N-F-U-S-E. -E. Okay. And it's by a company called um, Photographer's Toolbox. Okay. Um, it works very similar to HDR in terms that you bracket your photos. Uh -huh. uh, so from dark to light. Okay. From dark exposure, light exposure. And then you blend them in Lightroom through using this Infuse. Uh -huh. But what it does is it does it more naturally. So it takes the dark, it takes the light, it blends them all together. So it'll look at the really blown out stuff and it'll disregard it. It'll look at the really deep shadows and disregard it and take the best of each picture and kind of blend them all together. But isn't that what all the HDR softwares it, do? It does, but it does it differently. Okay. If you get into this, the technical specs, because the people who wrote this program are super engineery, techy people. Uh, okay. And if you read their their spec sheets or something, it, it's and highly it, complicated. But they basically, it's more natural than HDR. Oh, okay. More natural. And is it expensive? No. It's a donation. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. You've got to be kidding yeah. me. Ooh, I'm going to try that. <laughs> so anyways, I, I blend them. Um, what but was the question? I forget about the, the lighting. Oh, about the lighting, yeah. Um, so 
it still doesn't it doesn't do the windows 100 percent right that's tough and the windows are the killer um, and when you're shooting real estate in florida it's 99 percent time it's about the view out the window oh yeah you know it's palm trees it's a lake it's the ocean it's the sky it's golf um, course i mean you might be able to get away, get away with it up in virginia because where it's you know a tree is a tree is a tree yeah um but down here it's all about the green and the water and the pools and the lanai oh, yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff um so when i got started I, what i was doing i thought was good at the time um but as i compared some other professionals have been doing it for eight years and ten years and stuff that I'm doing now. Um, it just wasn't what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and a real a real estate photographer had been doing for this for eight years. Got a hold of me um, and said, you know, we're overbooked. Can you take one of our clients? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, you know. And I had known their work, and so I figured I had to step up my game to kind of like match the quality of their work because this person is going to be expecting right. their work. And so I started messing with the windows more. Um, and didn't get it right away, but I found a technique um, that works really, really well. And I'm really reluctant to give away the secret. Ah. Um, <laughs> but one of the things to do is, is that I will flash a window uh -huh. um, just to get the detail in the window. So I'll expose just for the window. Um, outside the window, you mean? No, for example, from inside, let's say I'm inside a house and mm -hmm. there is a sliding glass door looking out into the night. I'm standing back there. Um, usually it's about 1 60th of a second or 200th of a second. Um, shutter speed aperture is at um, f10. And, um, and I will flash the window so I can see what's outside. Everything in the house will be dark, okay. but I want that window so I can see. So you're see metering what's on there. the outside, yeah, so the outside turns up. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, but then I flash the window, so everything around that window is lit up. Oh, okay. Because what I was finding is when I was bringing these photos into Photoshop to cut out the window, uh -huh. when you expose just for the window and it's dark and you cut them out, you can sometimes see a dark line around each part of the window. Oh, I see. So it was looking art very artificial. It was, you know, you're spending so you, you take one picture without flash to get the outside view. No, with the flash. With the flash. With the flash. So yeah, the window, so I get exposed for the window and then I light up the frame of the window. So it's it's white, basically. But you still get the window. So then I bring that picture. So, wait, okay, hold on. Like I'm still mad. Okay, okay. okay. I want to I understand it because okay. I don't do real estate photography. Yeah. So I, okay, so my camera's set to the background. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get a good, the, the, the golf course out there right, is going right, to come right. out. Right. And so the flash has nothing to do with that. But the flash, you, you pop the flash to get the outside. Yes, exactly. Doesn't the flash give you like a bulb right in the window? No, that's one of the, that's one of the little things you have to kind of learn where to stand. Oh, when you're flashing. so you just stand. So you stand to the side. Yeah, you get that whole angle of. And you're, you're always using an off camera flash. Yeah. Okay. I'll All right, a, I get it now. Light, yeah. And so I flash that. And then when I take um, the infused image, uh -huh. and then I'll take that flashed image. I'll bring them both into Photoshop, but I'll bring them in as layers so they're perfectly identical. And then I will cut out that window and leave it on top of the infused image. Wow, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and I, but I found a technique that's a lot faster that um, I'm going to keep that trade secret for right now. Ah, oh, <laughs> jeez. Um, I came across it, and it, it works pretty good. But. So now how many lights, you said you have six of these lights. Yeah. How many do, lights do you, say you're doing just a living one, room. Just one. So you're just using one light. Yeah. Now, do you have your shutter open a long time and you're popping the flash around different dark corners or how no, does that work? No, because that infuse will take care of all that. So when you do the bracketed photos, so you're going really dark to get the window and then you're coming lighter and lighter and lighter. So you're getting the inside of the room and when you infuse those images, it lightens the dark areas up and darkens the light areas up. Okay. Um, so that does pretty well, but then I'll bring it into Photoshop to kind of tweak some stuff. And so what do you use the lights for? The lights are Besides strictly, for, the, are strictly for the window. That's it? Strictly for the window. Wow. There, I mean, there, Scott Hargis, the guy that I was mentioning earlier, he's all about bringing umbrellas and um, he uses just speed lights, but he'll set up an umbrella on a stand um, he'll do two or three of those. That's how I learned. I mean, I did learn. Yeah. I took classes in real estate yeah. photography, but it was before digital, yeah. so there was no HDR. You know, I, I tried it. So we learned a lot about lighting. Yeah. 
I tried it. I couldn't get it to work for it's me. It's hard. You know, I, I that's one thing I never wanted to do it because when you started talking about getting the lines, and I'm thinking, ooh, yeah. that stuff drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that right personality no. for that. You know, I'm I, not detail oriented enough for that kind yeah. of work. You know, yeah, it gets a it's bit way, much for sometimes. me. It's more fun with people, and their hair is messy sometimes. Or, well, I'm no, I'm nit nitpicky about that stuff. But yeah, that's, yeah. That's easy. That's you why know? you do what you do. Yeah, and you do what you do, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's interesting to yeah. me. So, no, I mean, there's two schools of thought. I mean, it's to bring in all the studio lights and set them up in the corners. But, you know, people don't want to be there all day. Real yeah, estate agents don't want to be there day. four and hours. And, of course, we made a lot of money, too, though. Yeah. Now it's, you know, it's a faster. How long? Okay, so you have a 3,000-square-foot home, mm -hmm. three bedrooms. How many bathrooms do they have? Two bathrooms? Yeah, it, I it, don't could, know. it could range, yeah. How um, long will it take you to photograph the, two, ins two, the inside? A 2,000 square foot home will take okay. me about an hour. Really? Yeah. Only an hour? Yeah. I've gotten, wow, I've that gotten, blows my mind. Well, I've gotten better at it. I've gotten faster at it. It didn't, wasn't an hour when I first got started. Um, but, you know, after doing a lot of them, you, you start to get a sense of what, you know, what you're shooting and what, you're, what the perspectives are, where you're going to get your shots. Um, so for a 2,000 um, square foot home, they get 20 photos, which is a lot. I mean, it's a lot of photos. Yeah. And I did, um, I did a 900 square foot condo the other day. 900? That's 900, tiny. 900, yeah. Um, I was trying to think how I'm going to get 20 photos out of that. <laughs> you, know, you do a lot of outside stuff and, and the community amenity shots, that type of thing. All right, now time of day. Do you, do you work all day long doing this stuff? Yeah. So, oh yeah, you just came from yeah, yeah. a gig and it was the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah. I try, I try to do two shoots a day. Okay. Um, I can't, processing wise, I can't handle more than two a day. Um, and so usually about nine or 10 o'clock in the morning and then one or two in the afternoon. Okay, so you've got them. some seriously tough lighting out those windows. Yeah. Wow. Well, what I try to do is I try to, when a realtor contacts me, I will put it. I will put the address into Google Earth, uh -huh. and I will map it, okay. and I try to see where the exposure is, where the rear exposure and the front exposure is. Um, and after two half years, I've gotten pretty good at figuring out where the sun is okay. throughout the year. Like in the winter time now, it's it's hanging more south, and mm -hmm. it's a lot lower in the sky. Summertime, it's up about you know 12 o'clock all the time, which doesn't usually get in the way a lot. Um, so I try to schedule the shoot at nine or at one depending on where the front of the house is positioned. Because ah. I, I personally want the sun on the front of the house. Okay. Um, because that way you can get a nice shot. The sun is behind the house, and you're taking a shot of the front, or you're taking a shot of the pool and the lanai looking out, you get nothing but a big sun disc in your lens and lens flares. And, right, okay. Um, and I usually have end up changing out the skies and you know, it's just, it's more work and, right. you know, if the sun is behind the house, the house is in complete shadow, you know, so you have to get into Photoshop and really lighten things up. And, okay, so and, the uh, sun right on the, yeah, because if you do it, well, how often though is the house facing the sun? Quite a bit, actually. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah, isn't it like off to the side, so you get weird dark shadows in the middle of, of the a day? A lot of western exposures where the rear is facing west. I mean, you've got from 9 o'clock in the morning up until about um, until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you can shoot those. It doesn't always have to be in the front. It could be on the side, too. Okay. Um, and but then what about the big shadows? Um, you just kind of have to... Live with them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I bring them into Photoshop and... Do the magic. So there, you don't so. do the twilight shots. I do do twilight. Oh, you yeah. do those I too. Do, I do those as well. As yeah. well, okay. Because well, yeah. that's what I always heard. When's the best time to do the outside oh, is of the that house? What you're is that what you're asking about the twilights? No, I was just okay. curious. I'm curious overall. Yeah, twi <laughs> twilights. I mean, usually twilights you can get. You can manage to get three to five shots in before. You know, like what they call that it's gold, dark. the golden the hour, the blue or hour, the blue hour, whatever it is. Um, so right at sunset, it's usually not dark enough. It's usually 15, 10, 15 minutes after sunset. And then you've got maybe 10 minutes at the most to get your shots. Wow. And so you just have to get there an hour, hour and a half beforehand, figure out where you're going to be, where your shots are going to be. And then you just tell people you need to be out of the way. Don't stand in windows because I can see you uh -huh. outside. And you know, do they turn on all the lights in yeah, inside all, and outside the house? All right? lights, landscaping lights, interior everything. lights, every pool lights, bar lights, yeah, everything. And when you're doing a a, a twilight, 
-hmm. outside. Are you just doing a real long exposure or? I'm doing brackets on that as well. Oh, you are? Yeah. Interesting. Because the, actually, believe it or not, I've actually shot one exposure for 30 seconds and still wasn't, you know, bright enough. So, so then what did you do? You did another one even Yeah, longer? I just did, I did brackets, no. I didn't go into the bulb mode or anything. I've never, I've never been into bulb mode where you can just hold it forever, but um, no, so I mean bulb you get- Bulb mode is fun. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> no, I do the brackets, so I, because you, you want it, you don't want the lights to be blown out. Right. Um, oh, they oh will, yeah, because you got all the lights you've on. Got you've got, the, you've got oh, the same situation. So, I mean, right. you know, if you've got a house, it's got, you know, a nice big bay window and you've got a chandelier on the inside. Um, you know, if you're at 30 seconds, it's, it's going to be a big glare. It. You're right. I'm thinking it's dark, you know. But, it is dark, oh, yeah. But, but you still want those <laughs> bracketed photos. And in the sky, um, at an eighth of a second, the sky will be this beautiful, depending on what kind of night it is, but it could be this beautiful purplish yellow orangey color okay um, and then when you get down to you know a 30th of a second or a minute or three three seconds or something like that i mean it gets blown out and so yeah you kind of still need those bracketed photos yeah. wow that's interesting see mm. i didn't know that either i don't have a I, i've done it like when i first yeah. started as an assistant i've never you know yeah but i i thought process this, isn't for, this pro isn't for me <laughs> yeah, I mean, the process is the same and you just you're certainly under um time constraints though oh yeah and so so all right so how long tell me about the processing so so you did this job just the, let's talk about the one you just came mm -hmm. from how how what what did you just come from it was uh it was a condo um in a gated community it was under two thousand square feet okay um, took me about an hour okay um, did some interior exterior this person I've shot for before, so they've already got community photos. So I don't resell, I don't resell them the same photos oh, they've already got. Oh, I um, see. Because it, you don't just take pictures of a condo; you take the clubhouse and all yeah, that. Yeah, I try. Stuff. You know, I'm thinking. You know, it's, it should be part of my. I know a lot of people will sell them separately. You know, for so much money, I'll take some pictures of the community pool and all that. Um, my philosophy is, you know, they're getting pictures. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they'll pay for them once. Mm -hmm the community stuff i mean i can't sell it to them again um if i sh shoot another house with them in that same community i can't hey i got pool pictures for you like well, we've already got them like so what you know yeah. I'm gonna charge you. you can't really do that right so they pay for them once and then once they've got them then i will do the full range of photos for that place so okay so now you're going to take these photos home mm -hmm. or wherever Put them on your computer. Yep. What's what happens? So I now? go into Lightroom. Um, I'll create a catalog. I, I create a catalog for every um, home. Okay. And uh, Lightroom is a program I was not familiar with at all. It was another program I kind of had to learn. Lightroom. Uh, uh, was, if you watch my show, you know that I have a love-hate relationship yeah, yeah. with Lightroom. <laughs> I was trying to avoid it, but some of the people that I was learning from use Lightroom. I'm thinking. Well, you got to you got to suck it up and learn it. I did too. Bullet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so that whole catalog thing really was kind of throwing me for a loop. And um, I was like, what is a catalog? Why 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 do I have to use a catalog? And so you um, make a new catalog? A new catalog. Not collections. Time. No, not collections. Because if if I was to create collect, if I had just one catalog and a collection for every house, I would have four million photos in that one catalog. Um, and so after, so what I'll do is I'll, d I'll create a catalog for that one particular house. I'll download all the photos um, into that catalog. Um, and then I will stack, group or stack the photos together um, that are the bracketed photos. Okay. And then after I've, bracket, after I've grouped them all together, what they call stacking in Lightroom, um, I'll then run them through that Lightroom and Fuse. Oh. And then it will and go. And so can you do that? All right, so you took, how many <coughs> like pictures will you end up, not how many did you take, but Probably like, about 200 total. That's how many you took? Yeah. Okay, but how many, like, how many rooms is that? Or 20, you already told me, 20 yeah, pictures. Yeah, 20 photos total. Okay, so. And so it's anywhere from five to seven or eight shots per photo, per And you room. can, can you batch that? Yeah. So you stack this five, then this five, yeah. then this five, then this five, and then you, and they batch it, and yeah. so you don't. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's. Uh, I mean, I'm. I, I'm kind of hoping they keep this program, this uh, plugin, updated so it keeps growing with Lightroom. Because if without it, I wouldn't know what to do. 
Uh, That'd be kind of. You got a new learning curve. So well, yeah. Um, so yeah, you kind of, and it's called stacking in Lightroom, and so you just kind of just select them all, you stack it, select them all, and it'll put a little number at the top that says there's five photos in here, there's eight photos in there, uh -huh. um, and then you run them, you select them all, and you run them through the Lightroom Infuse, uh -huh. and it takes, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes sometimes okay. to Okay, depending them. on how strong your computer yeah, is. Yeah, exactly, and then it will automatically upload them back into Lightroom, and so you don't have to go find them. And, um, and then I will take one at a time. I will take the stacked image. Let's say it's a bath. Or let's say it's um, it's a kitchen shot with some windows behind there. Okay. I will take that stacked image, and I will take the flash image of the same shot oh, with the window. Oh, because you got to get the window. And then I will go in and I will open um, as layers in Photoshop. And then I'll work on it in Photoshop. Save it, close it. And it comes right back into okay. Lightroom. Yeah. Um, and then I've got some presets that I developed through Lightroom to kind of finish the photos. To like give it a more like yeah, vibrance or bring out the saturation, or pop or yeah, exactly the okay. the contrast and the clarity and all that kind of stuff, um, and then I just export them. I've kind of created some um, presets for exporting as well for like three different sizes. Okay. And um, what size do people want? Well, I guess well, if they're putting them in magazines, you've they got high. you've got print quality, so people can do brochures and postcards, oh, yeah. that type oh, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you've got um, the MLS, which is you know, multiple listing service, which is where the realtors put all their photos. Right. So, they, so is that they, a lesser? They're they can anywhere be from six eighty to eight forty or fifteen hundred whatever they by pixels um it just has to f all mls's have very strict requirements. so you just have to so you made presets yeah exactly so you, that's so, cool that's cool um and then after that um and one thing i learned um i, I sent an invoice to the realtor, realtor does not get any photos until i get paid it's a good I, idea you know, <laughs> and, I've never, and i've never not been paid so you know, it's well, they won't get their pictures. That's exactly. smart. Exactly. It works out. I'm, I'm pretty, um, I mean, I have some regular customers that, but mostly I yeah. get paid up front too because yeah. a lot of times people just don't get it. Yeah. You know? And they're going to get to next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, I got to pay all the people and whatever. Yeah. So, so let me just kind of think about this as far as, because we are a nature and travel photography mm -hmm. show. So, but I mean, we do have people, I know we've got some uh, regular uh, students, I'll call them, but they're professional photographers here who come to classes and things like that, mm -hmm. who are kind of travel photographers, but they do architectural photography mm -hmm. on the side. So if you're in thinking as a travel photographer, okay, you're traveling, of course you need a tripod, right, mm -hmm. to do the, the, the uh, bracket. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you? Yes, you do. What if you don't? Because I've done it. Put it on a rock, I guess, or something sturdy? I've done sturdy. it handheld. Have you really? Now, I've never used that software, but I've put it in Photoshop, and it, I mean, because I'm definitely moving, Yeah. but it's matched it up. Really? I mean, yeah. I'm not moving like this. Yeah. I'm like not trying, I'm trying not to move, but I'll go boom, 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 and I'll bracket. You know, so I'll you take have three different so exposures. It, so you have it set so it'll bracket all itself and like, are you? I always shoot manual, so I just do it. I just change. And you don't, it doesn't move that much? It wow. doesn't, I mean, it definitely moves, but mm. Photoshop can find the wow. edges. But I don't I, know I how, like, that. that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be for yeah. anything. It's probably not as, as sharp and yeah. everything is, yeah. but I'm thinking, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to bring my tri tripod when it's I travel, unless too. a little tiny one you yeah. might bring, you know. But I wonder if that software would work, would match it up. I bet it will. Boy, um, I'm going to get it, because now that you told yeah, me. Yeah, it's just a donation. It's not that much. Um, I think there's two there's two ways it can it can merge or bracket or group the photos together and one is um, through exposure and the other one it might be able to do you know it might be able to do the technique that you're saying that Photoshop does where it finds the lines yeah, or whatever I've never tried it I mean it's amazing or maybe it's not even Photoshop maybe it's Photomatix Photomatix probably it's probably Photomatix yeah. that I'm thinking of because it's looking at the ghost thing because it's trying to compare images and line them up and it's no, there's nothing solid edge, it will kind of move it over, I guess. I've never tried it. So I don't just know. Like <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about it. yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to try it, and I'm going to tell you guys when I'm done. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, so in your camera bag, you've got your, your tripod mm -hmm. with your fancy tripod head. Yeah. 
Manfrotto You've got your head, full yeah. frame camera. Yes. You've got a speed light, because yes. you only use one even though you have six, right? Yeah, yeah. And you've got a light stand or, what? You, no, you use it a monopod, monopod to, yeah. as your light stand. Mm -hmm. And you've got a trigger. Mm -hmm. What kind of triggers do you use? Uh, it's a GigaPro. Oh, I don't even know what Giga that is. Pro, I don't know. You know, it's Young Yo makes triggers too. Do they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got one that, um, one that will set off the flash and then one that I put, I screw into the hot shoe on that one that allows me to fire off the camera. So it'll fire the camera as well as the flash at the same time. Okay. It gets kind of convoluted, but uh, it, it seems to work and pretty fast setup. So. What else do you need as um, far as equipment? I'm gonna take a look at my list real quick. Okay. Um, what angle lens? Rechargeable batteries. Ooh, lots of batteries. Lots we of batteries. Always need batteries. Yeah, you can get them from Costco, the end loop. Um, any loop. I love any yeah, loops. Rechargeable batteries. Yeah. I never knew I could get excited about batteries yeah, until I, I met I'm, any loops. They save you a lot of money. Okay? <laughs> I know. Um, so, yeah, I use those a lot. I recharge them every night. And, and I've got these little packs that I got from uh, B&H Photo. Uh, they're like little cylinders. They hold um, like 16 batteries, I think. Oh, wow, so you've got a battery pack. In yeah, it. they're really nice. I mean, you just kind of pop them out, and, and one I've used them up, I flip them upside down so I know they've been discharged, and uh -huh. ones that are, you know, positive pointing up, they're still good, so. That's a good, that's a good yeah, system. Yeah, you know. Um, let's see, uh, what angle lens, you know. And a, a Pelican case for holding all that stuff. Oh, that's got that's wheels a good on idea. it. Yeah, hard case, so. Um, you you still got to pick that thing up and put it in your it car every like time. <laughs> um, and so one of the other things I'm, I'm starting to get into is video, uh, which I need to start doing more of. Oh, I want to hear about that. Um, and I've been trying to figure out which camera to shoot video with. Okay. Uh, especially for low light situations because unlike bracketing photos, you can't bracket video. Right. It is what it is. And so I've been trying to analyze how people are getting good video when a room is dark. Um, and I haven't really come to any good conclusions. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cameras out there. I've been shooting video with, um, with the 5D. I think it's lousy video, personally. Really? I Is really it? do. Oh boy. Real grainy. And I don't see why people are And it's the most recent it. 5D? Yeah. Wow. So I don't see why people are raving about the quality because it's Doesn't either I'm doing something wrong, which is highly possible, um, so I don't claim so to know so about So far video. you haven't seen it. Um, no, so I got, um, and DJI, you heard of DJI? Mm -hmm. The Phantom the guys? The Phantom, the drone company. Yeah. Um, they also came out with something called the DJI Osmo, which is a camera on a gimbal. And the gimbal is um, the thing that's on the bottom of a drone that holds the camera. It's a three axis gimbal. Okay. And so the drone can move all over the place and the camera will say rock solid, it won't move while the drone's doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, they put one of those gimbals on a little handheld, like, holder, I guess is what you call it. Um, so this holds a little camera that will s be stabilized. You can be moving all oh, over the place. Oh, and you can place. walk through the room. You can walk through and turn and it will slowly pan, but it doesn't catch the shake as all cameras do if you don't have it on um, you know, one of those glide cams or something like that. So You know, it was funny because I was trying to remember who was telling me about that. It was you. Oh, was <laughs> it's like somebody was telling me about a gimbal head on a... But that only holds a small camera, like a GoPro, or? It's um, it's a proprietary camera that DJI makes. Um, oh, they make their own camera. It shoots camera. 4K video. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have this yet, though? No, I have it. I do have oh, it. Oh, you yeah. do have it. I do it. have it, yeah. But you're not, it's not dark, it's not well it's, good enough in the it dark? It doesn't, I mean, I don't think there's anything that really gets, makes dark areas not grainy. Yeah, um, that's true. I don't think there's anything out there that really does it superbly well. Um, you know, but with this Osmo, it kills two birds with one stone. You got video, and you also got stabilization in a hand in your hand, um, and you can put it on a tripod. You can. Um, it's got suction mount, so you can put it on a car, so you can drive by a gated community and film it as you're oh. driving. But it, you can control it from your smartphone. Um, so it's got a lot of a lot of options. That's so this cool. Little package. How um, much does one of those cost? Uh, it's like 700 bucks. Wow, like that, that so sounds so cool. Terribly expensive. And I had looked into the glide cam for the 5D because everybody uses them. And my wrist got tired after like 30 seconds. I tried a glide cam. There's no way I'm going to be able to use one of these. Because I used things. to do video. And Did you really? 
Man, I wasn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're heavy. Yeah. And then you put a 5D or something bigger on I there. Know. It's another 10 pounds. And so, yeah, it was, uh, it didn't work for me. And so I'm giving the Osmo a go and. Oh, you know, interesting. See what that happened. sounds so cool. And you have a drone. I do have a drone, uh, yeah. Tell me about that. I've um, been doing it for about a year and a half now. And uh, it's. Because they love those overhead shots of the houses and things, I right? I would love to be a drone. I want to be a drone. You want to I want to go where the drones go. I mean, I think it's super cool to be able to. I mean, the technology is, is phenomenal, and it's only getting better. And are you do you use a DJI? I drones? use a uh, Phantom Three right now. I started okay. with the Phantom Two Vision Plus. And they they come with a camera. They come with the camera. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't. I just. It's all proprietary camera. This one's got 4K video, um, HD. Um, I think it's like tw it's either 12 or 14 megapixel camera. Um, not as good as a DLSR, um, but supremely sufficient for what you need. Well, and um, you're usually doing it with good lighting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you can a lot. You have manual control with the camera. I mean, not a lot of control. There's no aperture or anything like that. But you can enjoy, um, adjust the exposure up and down. Oh, okay. You can adjust the shutter um, and the ISO. That's oh, about it, okay. but there's no aperture or thing like that. Um, but I find that on a good sunny day, if you're not shooting into the sun, um, it takes really nice. phenomenal photos. And that's that. for stills? Stills, Or yeah. you do video I do that video too. as well. Okay. Yeah. Vi flying video with drone is, is different because it's different shots. Um, the drones are very, very stable. Um, you can get it up there and you can let go of the controls and it'll stay right where it is because um, it's all flying based off of a GPS lock. Um, so it tracks 11, 15 satellites, and so it'll s pretty much stay right where it is. And so you can adjust the camera um, and then wow. zoom around and get another picture and right, go up and down, take pictures. The video is another animal okay. because you're, tr you're getting sweeping shots. You're right. flying over and you have to control the camera and as you're flying over. So it just requires a lot of different thumb controls and camera controls and, um, it's a different beast, so but That's it's cool. Something. I gotta. Have, we have to have a show on drones. Yeah, Maybe we'll have cool. you back. Yeah. I know Joe has a drone. He's into it too. Oh, does so, really? Yeah. That's pretty cool technology. Is that, are they called drones or are they called quad crop? Quad, both. Both quad quad, quad <laughs> copters. Can't say yeah. it. <laughs> they're, they're both. They're both. Yeah. Oh, so. That is so cool. That's pretty cool. And, and that I, really helps you probably get the real estate jobs that you can do that. Because yeah, or does everybody do that now? Well, um, I think everybody's trying to. Um, but as of August, this past August, you have to have an FAA license now to fly commercially. Oh, that's right. Um, you can fly as a hobby person. You can you know, do whatever the heck you want to do. But if you want to make money now, um, you have to have this license. And it's a 60-question test given um, by a FAA licensed uh, operator. And oh, wow. It's the first test I've taken in 25 <laughs> 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 that was a little scary, but uh, you passed it. <laughs> <laughs> I did pass it, yeah. But it was uh, you had to study. It was not easy. It was yeah. learning um, aviation, airspace, and communication, and weather. And oh my god! I mean, a lot of it was very familiar in terms of um, regular pilot's license. Not, not obviously not as in depth. But, right. Um, yeah. So I mean, the FAA is still working at the bugs, but wow. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But it's good. It's good. No, I'm, I mean, I'm all for it because it weeds out the people who want to do it but are not good at it or not serious about it and are trying to take jobs away from people who are trying to do it safely and for right. a living. And, um, you know, I think the FAA in the beginning was just shutting everybody down because they were so afraid of what was going yeah. on. And the people do it for a living, you know, we train and... Um, we try to get good because we don't want to crash our thousand dollar yeah. quadcopter because it's easy to do. I it's easy to imagine. fly it into a tree or into a building and we don't want to do that. We want to be safe and yeah. we want to make a living at it. And um, Yeah, I mean, realtors really like it and they got properties. They go, you know, I, you know, everybody's seeing it from the ground. Let's see it from the air. And, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. yeah, it's pretty cool. Are there any like creative <coughs> tips that you have, like an architectural photographer, just thinking in terms creative of creative tips. Um, yeah, you know, is it, or is it? It's hard to be creative in in that type of photography. I don't know because um, you're such a creative well, person. Well, I mean, you've got you've got real estate photography, which is you know, you, it really kind of goes how you approach it. Um, real estate photography 
in my, in my opinion, is you're trying to show the flow of the house. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can take a, I've seen pictures of people who take pictures of a couch or a table, you know. And like little they're, vignettes, kind of. Unless they're selling the furniture, it really doesn't matter. Doesn't people make sense, see the yeah. Room, you know? So I get from the corners, I want people to, in the, in the order that I show them, you know, the front of the house, walking into the house, the foyer, you know, as it goes into the living room, as it goes off into the kitchen. So you try to kind of make it so when somebody looks at the photos, they can kind of piece it together in their mind okay. or visually so they can see how the house all fits together. Um, and then architectural photography, interior photography, which I do, um, vacation rentals. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a little different because people are focused more on the lifestyle part of it than. Yeah, that would um, make sense. Than so selling you what, you know, how square is the room and um, that's real estate. You know, how big is right. the room? Where's the bathroom? But in vacation rentals and interior, they want more details. They want to see how pretty something is. Yeah. And can I see myself? Um, Having a margarita on yeah, the porch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, that's so cool. Um, Creative tips, get your verticals right. I mean, that's that's a sure sign that you don't thing. know what you're doing. Yeah. Now, I know, um, well, we were talking a little about b before the show, a friend of mine who owns a construction mm -hmm. company, uh, he was talking about, like, the staging. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the expensive real estate photographers. They make sure every little curtain is yeah. steamed and, you know, and then... You know, the other people, sometimes they miss stuff and the real estate agent has to pay attention to it. Um, what are your thoughts on that? That's one of those things you kind of have to figure out what you're going to do as a photographer. Um, I decided from day one that I don't want anything to do with staging. Okay. Um, I'm not a stager. I've never been to school for staging. I know it looks good, but I don't know how to make it look good. Right. In, in terms of, you know, does a basket need to go there versus a pillow versus a plant? I don't. You know, if it's there, I go, oh, that looks great, or that doesn't look so good, let's take something away. I can say that. Right. But I, you know, because staging is, I mean, people get paid a lot of money for staging. I know. So you um, talk to the real, when they hire you, you make that clear. Yeah, that's, their part, of responsibility. that's part of my terms and, and conditions is that I'm there to photograph the property exactly as it is. So you better make it good. Yeah. And, and most <laughs> of them get that. You know, they're Are there any little things you have to look out for, though, like the cords or um, I mean do that that they don't see that you cords. you know like for me as a portrait photographer everybody anybody even people who I haven't photographed know one of my pet peeves the first thing I notice is if those young women who wear those hair bands around their <laughs> wrists <laughs> and nobody notices them yeah. and boy that's the first thing I see because I've photoshopped <laughs> too many of those out you know I go, why is that hair band still on my wrist right so, so I mean is there anything like that that you have to really look out um, for in that kind it's, of it's curtains it's curtains get crooked don't they lines it's pillows it's the little things that kind of um, it's a little everyday things that people like soap bottles in the sink. Um, oh yeah, because you just get used to seeing. You get stuff. used to see stuff like that, yeah. And you're and then you're looking like I just the one I shot today was um you know it was it was a small place, but I could see the soap bottle spout sticking up above you know the rim of the bar, and so I just stuck it under the counter. And right. It's little things like that. And, um, every realtor is different. Some people are real um, anal about. Everything just being absolutely precise. Yeah. Others are, you know, it is what it is, and you just kind of. So you just you feel like you just get an eye for it after a while. Yeah, you do. You so. do. I like to have all the lights on. Um, kind of helps with the ambience, makes it feel lived in. Okay. Because the thing is about real estate photography is that people want to see a house that's comfortable um, and homey, but not so anybody lives there. Okay. O almost like a model home. I mean, they don't want to see right. somebody's, you know, iguana cage over in the yeah. corner and stuff like that. They I know. I always tell. I always hear people say, "Oh, take all the personal photos down." Of course, as a f family photographer, I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, you don't <laughs> like that. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, people have uh. the entire house is nothing but family pictures. And, I know. Um, but you know, with the wide angle lens from the distance, you really can't make out what it. Yeah. What it How really you know is. And so I don't care. I don't really worry about that too yeah. much. Um, but you know, certain like paper towel rolls. Um, some people have super fancy paper towel holders, but you can't make a roll of paper towels 
pretty. Yeah. It's a roll paper <laughs> because the holder, <laughs> the holder is usually just holding this big white thing and you can't make that look classy. You just can't do it. So, so what, are, what are some of the mistakes you see that people do in real estate type of um, photography? The verticals for one. The verticals. Um, we, over, we got that one we got down. Verticals. Um, overcooked HDR. Overcooked H. That yeah. well, that's when it starts looking cartoony, yeah. kind of a little bit. Um, windows, overexposed windows, oh, no yeah. detail in the windows. Um, sorry, got my list again. Look at the list. I had some things on there. Um, strange perspectives. What does that mean? Um, when you go into a kind of a room and you just get it from, what I've noticed is that with all photography and all things creative, it's all about the artist's eye and how you see things. Okay. Um, and some people just don't see things the same way. Um, when I'm going in there and I've got the camera, I'm looking through the lens, there's something in my brain that just tells me it either works or it doesn't. Okay, okay. And I don't know what it is, um, whether it's a symmetrical thing. For example, I'll, I'll have a wall here and a wall here and something in the middle. And I have a little bit of picture frame sticking in the corner here and a little bit of a table, but the main scene is here. And if I rotate it just off a little bit and the picture frame is missing, there's something wrong. In my mind, it feels like there's something wrong with that picture. So I'll move it back over and just kind of get it. So it's in strange perspectives where you get it from right behind a couch. Okay. Um, where you're kind of looking over a really tall couch and the couch is kind of blocking the view. Oh, of the yeah. Living room. Okay. Um, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes there's, that's the only. That's the only place you can available. fit. <laughs> um, height of the camera on the tripod. Okay. Um, I usually try to have it so it's almost in the center of a ceiling. Okay, between so if you have an eight foot floor. ceiling, it would be yeah. four feet high? Yeah, somewhere. In, it's usually between my eyes, maybe down to my neck where the lens would be. So you have a proper perspective. So proper right? perspective. You don't want too much ceiling. Um, because then you know, you're focusing on the ceiling, you got a big white ceiling that's taken up a third of the picture because you got ceiling and then you got the interiors and then down the floor type of thing. So you kind of want less ceiling, um, unless there's something there. You might have the coffers, uh, you might have a nice chandelier, okay. that type of thing. It really depends on what you're trying to get, but sometimes I'll adjust the height of the tripod. Um, if you go into the kitchen and you got higher kitchen cabinets uh -huh. and you got the bar, you have to raise your camera up to get over it. Unless you're not, you're going to be shooting underneath it. And that's going to um, be And then you go jarring. in the living room, you can drop it down a little bit. Some bathrooms have really low cabinets, um, so you have to get even lower. Okay. I shot a, a, a house the other day. Um, the beds were like down to here. Oh, wow. And it was unoccupied, so they were just there to kind of mimic a bed. Oh. So, but if I had shot at my normal height, it would have looked like a little dollhouse. <laughs> and so I lowered the camera way down to make it look like, you know, a real Now, when you lower the thing. camera, though, do you start getting the converging lines? No, because I lower the tripod, not, I don't point the camera down. Okay. So I, I just lower the whole thing down, um, not point down. Uh -huh. And that's another mistake. There's a photographer I see, and he's a tall guy, and he doesn't adjust the height of his camera because he doesn't like bending. This is just an assumption, but he doesn't like bending down. Uh -huh. Um, and so all his pictures are pointed down. Oh, no. So all his verticals uh, are, yeah. which I think is really odd. But um, uh, not knowing Photoshop. Yeah. Not knowing Photoshop. I think you know, if you don't know how to work Photoshop, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, the color casts in a room. Oh, that's a good point. Um, there's a lot of people out there leaving it very yellow. Oh, people don't like that. No, which when you get the incandescent lighting, that's kind of making everything really yellow. Now, what do you do if you have, you know, mixed lighting? Like you know, I've never paid attention to lighting so much in my life <laughs> as, as until I started doing this. And the, the true difference in the sunlight, the blue of the sunlight, and incandescent of or the yellow of incandescent lights, and the difference between the two, it's just unbelievably dramatic. Yeah. Because um, you got the sunlight coming in through a window or through a sliding glass door, and it's blue. Yeah. You don't see it with the eye, but the camera makes it. Because it looks white to us. Yeah, camera makes it blue. And then you've got light bulbs in the corner. Everything over here is yellow, orange. So what do you do about that? Um, you can't do a universal white balance correction. You kind of have to pick something somewhere in the middle um, where things are, and Lightroom's got so many controls. 
Um, so what I'll do is sometimes I'll do an auto white balance, which does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll kick down the blue a lot and the blue slider and blue saturate, not saturation, not luminance. There's one in the middle. Um, I'll kick the blue down a lot. So it'll take the blue out of the floor and the blue coming out of the windows. And then I'll kick down the orange and the yellow a little bit. So it takes down some of that incandescent. You, you can't get do rid of Do you use adjustment it. brushes or do no. you just, you always do the whole thing? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Um, so, I mean, but I've seen a lot of really yellow pictures. Yeah, that's terrible. Um, realtors take a lot of their own pictures and they're very yellow. Um, so that's a, that's no, a but big one. No, but if you're shooting in raw, it's pretty easy to fix it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but there's no, there's no straight one button You just kind of have to fool around yeah. with those. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. And you're kind of developing your own style too when you're doing that. You know, what do you like, you know, um, in terms of do you want it yellow? Do you want it too blue? I think the sunlight in the blue is too much sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you don't want to. You don't you want know. it to look really either and a one. lot of tile floors and marble floors, I mean, they'll get blown out. They're so white. Oh, yeah. Uh, which are really, they're worse than windows sometimes. Oh. Um, yeah. Man, you're learning a lot about real estate yeah. photography. <laughs> I guess, you know, the best thing to learn about anything is, is uh, just doing it. Just doing it, yeah. And doing it often. I didn't know anything in the beginning. So. Now, what, what's coming up next for you? Um, I want... I, it's coming up. I don't. It's not like I'm taking any trips to Jamaica or anything like that. I wish I was. <laughs> um, continue to get better at what I'm doing. Um, I'd like to do a lot more commercial and um, architectural. Now, mostly you're doing ho homes. Yeah, okay. it's mostly real estate. Um, that's probably like 90 percent. 10 percent is commercial and architectural. Did you watch the show last week with David Sussman? No, I did not. Oh God, you got to watch that okay. one. He is a commercial photographer, okay. and he. He's amazing. It's like commercial in terms of um, like product photography type of thing, or he does everything. Okay. He does buildings. He does some wow. of the stuff he does with the buildings yeah, is, will awesome. blow your mind. Wow, take he's a look. very very creative. Okay, cool. And he's very technical, but he inspired me a lot. So I want to go out and try all oh, kinds cool. of weird I'll things that, that he out. did. Yeah. yeah, it was a good show. So, but he does a lot of commercial architectural okay. stuff, which. I'll have uh, to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, he's really nice too. Is he lives he? in Punta Gorda, so he's a little okay. out of uh, oh, out of your which is out good, of your which is good. territory. <laughs> which is good. He's got that area. I'll take this yeah, area. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like to do that more. I've I've done some hotels in Miami and oh wow. Um, so I've done some and I, I like it. I just, I like the feel of it. Um, money is better. Yeah, as I was well. gonna say I was it probably yeah. pays better too. It pays too. a lot better. Yeah. Although um, you have to travel a little more, maybe. Yeah, but I'm okay with that. That's it's, okay, you know, yeah. Okay. I'm putting a lot of miles on that car anyway, so yeah. that's to be expected. And I'd like to get into drone racing. What? That's really what I want to do. I didn't even know there was such a yeah, thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, my God. Um, whereas the photography drones, they're very stable. Mm -hmm. um, they're for taking pictures. Racing drones, they have no limits. They flip, they roll, they turn, they can zip around. And, um, so I'd like to learn how to do that and get into that. Oh, my gosh. Maybe gosh. start a club down here or something. Oh, like my that. gosh. That's so cool. I They're never heard cool. of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Expensive hobby. <laughs> it is, yeah. You're be doing a lot of real estate <laughs> photography. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, okay, so how can people find you? Because we're going to have his websites listed on our site, understandphotography.com, but let's talk about your websites. Okay, so my website, um, I'll spell it for you. It's Home Photo Pro Rep dot com and it's home h-o-m-e photo p-h-o-t-o -O, um, pro as in professional p-r-o and then rep is in real estate photography dot com ah. yeah it's kind of a weird thing but i couldn't get home photo it was already taken so. somebody doggone these people that's how i came up with understand yeah. photography i just sat what's there looking left? through domain names <laughs> what's left yeah and then everybody adds an ing yeah They're, it's not understanding <laughs> it's understand it's a command <laughs> That's pretty good. I wouldn't know that. Um, and my phone number is 239-410-4340. Uh, um, I guess that's about that's it. it. Yeah, that's so it. So if people need to get a, in touch with Greg, again, you can check him out on his websites. And check out his uh, pixologyarts.com website, too, because he's an, he's an amazingly creative. You, you're not going to believe it. So... Anyway, so uh, we'll have all these links right on our website, understandphotography.com. Remember, it's a command, understandphotography.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the show so you'll get a reminder, email, a reminder sent by e to your email so you never miss a show. 
Um, next week's guest is Brian Jansen, and Brian is one of our instructors here at Understand Photography, but in the summers, he leads photo tours in Europe, all over Europe. So he, he has a lot to talk about. If, you, if you're into travel photography, especially in Europe, you're going to love my interview with Brian next week, Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Understand Photography Show. This is uh, Peggy Farron, and we'll see you next week.